guys, my name is Jack Gardner and welcome back to another free lesson on a Friday. This time we're going to be taking a look at playing outside using a technique called sidestepping. There's a few other little ideas in there later on. But yeah guys, before we dig into the teaching part, I just want to ask you please do make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click that little bell for notifications. I make free lesson content every Friday. I think this is number 9 now. Maybe we'll do something cool next week for number 10. Yeah, I don't just do lessons. I am literally about to release my original music super, super soon. I know I've said that in the past two weeks, but yeah, I'm just a little step closer. I can't wait to reveal who I've been working with as well. Some really, really cool people and people that I look up to. So yeah, that's coming super soon. I also do gear reviews, gear demos, things like this. If you like this term, by the way, this is Neural DSP, the Fort Cali Suite. Um, yeah, this sounds monstrous. But guys, yeah, I'm always open to suggestions as well. Just, I'd like to point out that most of these lessons have been from the comments section or emails or direct messages, things like that. So yeah, I'm always open to let you guys kind of tell me what you want to learn. Right, okay then dudes, let's dig into the teaching part then. Okay then guys, so what is outside playing? Well, I guess really all it means is creating tension and then releasing. So, I mean, you can do this with certain scales, like the diminished scale or the altered scale. I actually do have a lesson on the diminished scale if you go back a couple of episodes, shall we say. Um, yeah, there's some cool ideas in there. We are going to take something that's a little bit more accessible. So, you know, if you're worried about playing over that kind of chord type or you don't really know that scale, you don't need to worry. So long as you know a minor pentatonic, you can achieve this outside sound by using a thing we call sidestepping. So, all we need really is this E minor pentatonic shape, which is all the way up here. All we are going to do with this sidestepping is basically move up a semitone or down a semitone towards a certain beat or towards a certain bar. So the first exercise we're going to do is take an E minor pentatonic. Basically, we're going to take one bar of E minor pentatonic. And then, depending on the direction we're moving, we're going to basically try and find the next nearest note of F minor pentatonic. This is actually really easy because all you have to do is shift the position up one fret, or the shape up one fret, I should say. So, one bar of E like this, two, three, four. Then we're going to stop here. We're going to look for the next nearest note of F, so it would be this one. Carry on. And then when we come back, we're going to go to the next nearest note of E, which will be this one. Remember, we're moving down, or in this direction, so we're going to find the next nearest note of F, which actually is F in this case. So here we're moving up, and we're looking for the next nearest note of E, so we get this. Etc, etc. So just that exercise again, all together without the pauses, would sound like this. One, two... I'm sure you can hear there, we're already getting some kind of cool chromatic gaps, you know, linking the phrases, which I guess is what outside playing is all about, really. What we are trying to do is create tension and then basically release it. I think that's the whole thing of, you know, when people go, oh, what was that? That sounded really cool. It's this kind of idea. So another way to do this, though, would be to take, say, that same idea, but we move it on the fourth bar. So we'll play three bars of E minor pentatonic, and then we'll play one bar of F minor pentatonic. So you could do something like this. Two, three, four. <laughs> sound a bit more cool if you like that. Now I wonder why it's the fourth bar or you know like why it's going to be kind of one bar of E and one bar of F. I guess it's to do with us being or our brains liking to try and create a pattern out of these you know to, to kind of say it's okay. I'm sure you've heard the expression you know make a mistake play it again play it again 
and the people will, ex will accept it, they'll think that you meant it. It's that same kind of idea. I think our brain likes to formulate these into patterns, if you like. So yeah, I mean, really if you wanted to, you can play anything so long as you've got good time feel and it will work you could literally choose any scale over any chord as long as you resolve it it's gonna it's gonna be fine if you play with conviction and confidence really you can make anything sound good i think anyway but anyway let's move on then to the final exercise i think this one is really cool you could actually turn this into a lick if you'd like this is something that i did right at the beginning in the first um, improvisation section of this video so all we're going to do is take one arpeggio, so in this case we could do it with E minor 7. Now like I said earlier with side 7 you can take it down or up, so we're going to take a, a, a minor 7 arpeggio, a semitone down or a half step down, that would be E flat or D sharp minor, minor 7. <laughs> Sorry I'm getting my words all mumbled. Then we're going to go back to E. And then up to F minor 7, so just up a half step again. So you can get something like this. As long as you resolve back to E on that strong beat, it's going to work. Now you could sequence that arpeggio in whatever way you want, so long as, like I say, you resolve. So you can start from the fifth. I think this is kind of like an idea that I played right at the beginning. So we've got. Really easy way to do that. Now, of course, with this kind of sidestepping, you can go crazy with it. I think you can use rhythmic repetition. That works really well. So say something like this. That's going to work well. Um, maybe something that just moves always up, that's another way you can do it so you don't have to just think about going up one and coming down, you can constantly rise. I think I did some things like this. So long as you resolve on a strong beat. Like I say, if the time feels good, anything's going to work really. So guys, I hope all of that has made sense. Yeah, this is a really, really cool sound. And remember, experiment with going up, down, all these different things. Just make sure that you resolve. I think that's the whole point of outside playing. So guys, thanks again for checking out this lesson. If you like that, please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But also let me know your suggestions for next week. I think I said earlier this this will be number 10 next week, I believe. So yeah, maybe we can do something cool. Maybe something lick-based or, you know, like technique-based a bit different from these i'm always open to your suggestions basically so yeah guys like i said again please do make sure you like comment subscribe click that little bell for notifications i'm making these free lessons every friday also it's worth me pointing out that if you are interested in this kind of stuff and you'd like more in-depth things with licks and back and tracks and whatnot I do have some all the lessons available on my website. I'll leave the link to that down in the description. There's one in particular in there called One Chord Groups and Improvisation Class, which covers all of these kinds of ideas with loads of licks thrown in as well and back and tracks, of course. So yeah, I'll make sure that's in the description for you guys if you want to check that out. Guys, thanks again for checking this one out. Until next time, cheers.